What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Crown Cinema Podcast. In this episode, we literally just watched No, no Country, Country for, for Old Men. Men. What a classic. That's just such a great and well-made movie. Yeah, I think this is... I think this is probably my sixth time watching it. Damn. It's a good one. Well, it's like... It's one of those movies where I just ask somebody, I was like, you ever seen No Country for Old Men? And they say no, and it's, okay, what, this is what we're watching. It's also, do you feel like this after watching it six times? I feel like it's a movie that you pick up on and get something new from every single time you watch it. I, I just did. I just didn't. I mean, we could talk about that, but yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's one of those greats. It's just, I feel like it's so much of a themed movie. Yeah, the theme is so prevalent throughout it, and you just see it pop up so many times. Like mm-hmm. I think the movie is about just how shit happens in life, and mm-hmm. you have to figure out how to deal with it. I feel like that's what Tommy Lee Jones' character kind of talked about in the beginning. He's struggling, just having to deal with and having to accept that shit happens in life that sucks. Yeah, the main principle of this is if you haven't seen it, spoiler alert. But the biggest thing in this movie, where it just kind of shit happens to us, is our main character gets killed off screen and mm-hmm. you're like what yeah but that kind of goes in line with what this movie's about how just kind of shit happens sometimes and you know there's no other choice but to accept it yeah and it, yeah I, I definitely want to get into that because i i know for the first couple maybe three times like you know i, I was definitely younger and i was more into just the plot of anton right. versus uh yeah llewellyn Luell. llewellyn llewellyn just that whole, like, that's all you really care about when you're really watching it, just for the action. I'm, and I remember just not really thinking or caring about what Tommy Lee Jones' character was saying. Right. Because it's kind of just, it's an old man just, like, kind of drawn on, just yeah. thinking out loud, like that type of thing. But watching it now, it I mean, it has so much to do with the movie. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, we, we can get into that later. But what, right. what are you thinking? What's your rating? Out of 10, I'm going to go a solid 9. Okay. What yeah. you got? Uh I'll go I'll go nine point three. Nice. This is just all time up there. Scott. I give it a ten. Damn. Yeah. Perfect movie. Fair fair enough. Yeah, there's nothing really wrong with it. Nope. Gets better every time. It I'd, really does get better would, every time. I'd say so. Because yeah. again, you like you the first time watching it, you're kinda like it, you don't know what it, what the movie is. So when Llewellyn dies, you're kind of pissed. You're like, what the hell? Yeah. Like, that sucks. The beginning might seem boring with Tommy Lee Jones just kind of rambling over the B-roll of the landscape of the, you know, West Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the second time watching it, you kind of, oh, shit. You start picking up, pick up on it a little bit more. So again, it definitely does get better. Yeah. As you watch. Yeah. So just right off the bat, I can't believe it's taken me this long to realize it, but... It, this movie came out in 2007 and I just figured out that the whole time setting of this movie is like 19, like late 1970s to 1980. Which makes sense because there's no like phones. Right. But the way I, just the way you think is like they're out in the middle of nowhere, Texas. Right. And it's just like old fashioned, old school It probably doesn't America. look much different today. You know, that's like, that's what I'm thinking the whole time and. You know, because they are, I mean, they're just cowboys, like on horses, and I just assume that is how it would be today. Yeah. It, especially because it takes place in West Texas, and I've been to West Texas the past couple of years. That's just what it looks like. Like, I mean, there ain't shit to compare it to. Exactly. Well, and I'm just, I'm thinking about the gas stations that I've stopped at, like in yeah. West Texas. They yeah. look just like what you're seeing in that movie right there. Yep. And so, uh, No Country for Old Men, th- is this based on a book, Scott? Yeah. Okay. So obviously, I mean, the book is written in 1980, but I think it's... So what I took away from the movie is it's all pretty much Tommy Lee Jones' perspective. And he's an older man, and, you know, he's he's the sheriff of his town, and he can keep up with the crimes. I mean, obviously, he is right there with yeah. all the chases, all the investigations. I mean, he... He knows what's up. He he sees a lot too because he's a sheriff, yes. so he hears what happens in other towns. Yeah, and he's on the lookout for stuff, so exactly. he's very invested in what crimes are getting being committed. And so I think what he's kind of hinting at is that when he got into this this police game, this police business, is that he was younger, obviously, and so the world just kind of made sense to him because it was the world that 
he essentially like had created, you know, like when you're in your twenties and thirties, you're kind of shifting and molding the world that's going to be, or the world that it is right now. Like, yeah. You have more, con- it's, it seems more, like you have more control of the future. Yeah. And like, you're just, you're more in tune, like with the culture and like, you understand like why people do whatever they do. But then now that he's older, nothing makes sense to him at all. Like he can't piece together like why people are just dying and being killed in the ways that they are. And then, so that's where it's important that he talks to uh, like his older friend kind of at the end there. Yeah. Who's got the pot of coffee that's, you know, I refill it every week. <laughs> yeah. And that guy tells him just like about a case that his grandfather went through in like 1909. And it was messed up and it didn't make any sense. And so the whole message is like, the world has always been a terrible place. Like there's always just been meaningless horrors that have happened to, yeah. you know, people all over the country and the world. And he's like, it's not, it hasn't changed. And then I think this movie came out in 2007. So if Tommy Lee Jones, like if his, if his character sees 2007, then he's completely lost. Yeah, I mean, it, in a in a way, it's it's just gotten even worse. Well, I don't think he's or lost that's how, at like, the end. Old people like take it. Yeah, I don't even I don't even think he's lost at the end. I think he's just have not, has now realized there's really no stopping or controlling this yeah. cons- consistent, unexpected horror that just happens to people. People yeah. get struck with luck, and also people get struck with disaster. Yeah, because he's you know he's made it to a very old age and sure he's been a sheriff in a pretty quiet town probably for the most of his career but you know at, there's got to be plenty of points in that long of a career where he has like dealt with dicey situations where he doesn't know if he's going to make it out or not and so the whole point of sorry we're kind of I guess we're kind of working our way back um, but it's whenever he gets back to the motel he knows that Anton like goes back to crime scenes. Yeah. And so like the whole, you know, is Anton like behind that door, like just waiting to kill whoever is coming in next. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when he just realized, he was like, you know, I've I've made it this far. I haven't died. No serious injuries. Time to just let's ride off into the sunset. I've rolled the dice too many times and I think I'm just ready to just coast along. Yep. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, and even I think he, I feel like at the end, he's not really okay with just sitting there now because he's yeah. like, I think I'm going to ride the horses out. You want to come with me? She's like, oh, no, I got work to do. Yeah. Well, no, then, she's got a job. Right. You know, she's like, I ain't retired. That's what I mean. And he, yeah. And he's like, all right. And he's like, okay, I think I'll help out in here. So, like, oh, you better not. Like, I like to, to do it. Like, yeah. this is my house. Let me yeah. fix it how I like it. He's like, well, shit. What the fuck am didn't, I going to do? Didn't, didn't really think this one through. No, no, definitely not. So I, think I, I bet a lot of old people feel like that once they retire. I, I mean, yeah. It's like, well, that's, shit, now what do I do? Yeah. That's, that's, that's why you can never stop. Well, you know, it's... I just think it would be really tough to retire in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Like, there's no real community, like, around him. Like, all of his neighbors are miles and miles away. Right. There's There's probably not really, like a bar or a coffee shop where like all the old people go, you know, not out in the middle of nowhere. Now, I mean, his friend he went to at the end, he was sitting alone in his wheelchair or chair, I guess, or whatever, yeah. with his coffee brew and from a just, week ago. You know, and, he asked him like, how you doing? And he says, you're looking at it. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. This is what I've been doing all day. This is what I did yesterday. And this is what I'm doing tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it is interesting. I mean, obviously the title is No Country for Old Men. And so it's just saying like... This world we live in is not meant for these for yeah, old people because they look back and see all these horrors that have just happened and have to yeah. accept it. And he is... So this is how I interpreted, um, you know, the final, the final scene where he's explaining to his wife the two dreams he has. And in the second dream, he pretty much explains that like his dad is like, lighting some type of what campfire yeah, campfire campfire like out in the middle of the darkness and he goes on to explain you know I'm older than my dad by 20 years when he passed right now so you know he's like the younger one in the dream but he goes into the darkness and then he says like you know 
I know that if I go there, he's going to be there. But mm-hmm. it's a dream, and then it ends. And so I think... It doesn't even end. He wakes up. Yeah, he wakes up. And so my interpretation of that is that, like, he's just, he's kind of a scared old man. He explains at one point in the movie that he's been waiting on God to kind of make a bigger impact on his life and make it seem like it had more meaning, mm-hmm. and it just hasn't happened. And so now, like, he's getting old in age, and, you know... He thought when he was younger that when he got to this point, he would just know what's what. It would all just make more sense to him, and mm-hmm. it doesn't. And so that scares him. So and now he doesn't even like have his father to like confide with. Yeah, that's how I took it. I took it as him just not like it. I think he's just accepting the shit that happens in the world. There's so many signs of that throughout the movie where it's just shit just kind of happens. He stumbles upon the money, and then. Mm-hmm. Um, he ends up getting chased by it, and then Anton Chigurh shows up, and Anton, his whole character is based on principle, and when people don't have principles, that's when he'll turn and and like kill somebody. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. whenever the old man in the convenience store, they got that guy was just kind of floating through life. It seemed like he, this is where he grew up, I guess, and he he <laughs> didn't even earn the money he has. He married into a family, so then he flips a coin and. Luckily, he got saved because he yeah. picked right. Um, and so all so he's just disgusted. Yeah, and, yeah, he's disgusted by this guy, that, and he and he hates small talk. You know, asking like, "How's the weather?" Like, or like, "Y'all getting rain up there?" Yeah, and he's like, "What?" Yeah. So Anton comes in and you know, obviously kills Llewellyn halfway through. Without, or not, I guess at the end there, without you really realizing it. So, like, all these kind of stuff just kind of happens as a chance. When at the end, Anton Segura gets hit by that car. Mm-hmm. So, you can't predict anything that happens. You're going to have to just kind of accept the fact that shit's going to go wrong. Yeah. Bad things are going to happen. Well, That's just kind of life. It's funny. I guess it is interesting that Anton, like, his whole character is just, I mean, confident. I mean, he always is saying, like, no, I I know where it's going. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. He just always, he's saying, like, I know where it's going to, I know where it's going. I know that it's going to be brought to me and placed to my feet. Like, he's just so sure of it. Mm-hmm. And that's just how he always goes about it. He always thinks he knows exactly how the situation is going to pan out. Yeah. And that's just not the case. No. Because at the so, end, there, like, how can you still be so sure? Because nothing has gone according to plan yet. I think because he lives by these strong principles, where yeah. like it's all about decisions being made for a reason, or I guess just maybe not even for a reason. I guess you, you just expect people to live by something, like live by some type of code. If you don't, he doesn't respect you. Like yeah. the old lady, the one old lady that back talked him, she was not breaking that principle she had about yeah. those rules, and he was like, "All right," and he let her go. Yeah, like he didn't kill her out of because she. The one person that didn't go along with what he was saying, he killed him. Mm-hmm. And when he turned to the um, Woody Harrelson's character, the other bounty hunter type of guy, mm-hmm. I guess just private investigator is what he was. Yeah. Whenever he comes, he turns on his principles and like he goes against what he knows he believes because he said he told like a, a few scenes ago to Llewellyn when he's in the hospital that Anton Chigurh doesn't care about money or anything. He cares about principles. And so when he sits down and he acts like he's this, you know, stockbroker guy or day trader is what he said. He's like, oh, um, he said, I, I can go to an ATM. I have $14,000 I can give you. He's like, an ATM? He's like, you know I don't like money and you still try to, uh, like, persuade me with money. Yeah. Like, you're going against what you believe. Kills him without a single thought. Interesting. So he has these strong principles that he's living by. And if you don't, you're nothing to him. Mm. And he did get the money. Did he at the end? He didn't he didn't walk away with it. He did. No, he didn't. The Mexicans got it. No, no, no. Because when Tommy Lee Jones goes in after the crime scene, he notices because Josh went to the motel and he put the money in the vent. And then when okay. Tommy Lee Jones shines his light, he sees the scratch marks that Anton Yeah, with with the quarter. Yeah. Or so a dime. He, so when the Mexican, like when the shootout happens and uh, Josh Brolin's character dies, like 
he was probably waiting on Anton, and he gets surprised by like a truckload of cartel members. Yeah, yeah. And then just you know guns them down, and then you know they're like, oh shit. So like they probably weren't expecting that because they had no idea what he's been doing. You know, they just think this guy's probably just been running around with this money. Yeah. And like they don't know that there's like some psycho that he's been dealing with, and then all of a sudden he's probably just sitting on the bed with a shotgun and just. And then they just got out of there. Didn't even find the money. They might have just taken it and left, though. And then the, the, the they all, well, I guess they would have killed Llewellyn. Yeah, maybe you're, you're probably right. Because it all would have happened too fast because Llewellyn was there, the Mexicans were there, and Anton was probably there. Or he had to have been there. Anton went after the crime scene. That's like what the conversation oh, was okay. with I the, see. I see. the older right. sheriff. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, what happened was the Mexicans show up to get the money. He shoots them with a shotgun. And then, so he kills that one guy. You see the one dead guy, and then you see the other two like get in the truck or whatever. Yeah. The reason that's happening is because they can hear the police sirens. So they're probably like checking, like they don't have enough time to put together, like through all the chaos, that there's like a bunch of money in a vent. Right. They're probably just looking in the bed, yeah, yeah. drawers, and then it's like, okay, we got to go. Yeah. And so, but Anton's like, no. Yeah. I already know exactly where the money is. Yeah. What's cool about, again, that theme of shit just happening with no good reason. Llewellyn gets killed off screen and he also gets killed being very careful. Like even though he did everything possible to protect himself and he did everything possible to hide the money, he did, he made smart moves the entire time. He still ended up getting killed because like what Tommy Lee Jones character says, talking to his girlfriend, wife, girlfriend, Oh, uh, Llewellyn's girlfriend. I mean, that's his wife. That's his wife. Yeah. Whenever he's talking to her at that diner, he tells her that, when it's man, when it's a man versus a man, or no matter what situation where there's like conflict, it's kind of up to chance still. Even when it's a man with a gun and a bull, he talks about how the bull, how the bull ricochets. Yeah. yeah, he's like, you, you know, there's still chance. Yeah. So, even though he did everything possible and everything careful, and Llewellyn probably thought he was gonna get away with it. Yeah. Life happens. Yeah. Well, because he's so preoccupied with Anton that he's not even thinking about the fact that the cartel could have somehow tracked down that like his wife. And mother are in Odessa, so then they find the mom. She yeah. tells them like what motel they're going to, and then that's how they find him. You know, he just he's so preoccupied with Anton, he's not even thinking about yeah the fucking cartel. Yeah, and it's, that's such a big thing that you should, probably should be thinking about. But you've just been dealing with one psycho this whole time. And I, I, now that you say that, it seems like all the characters think they have it figured out. And definitely. something always happens to him. Anton definitely thinks he has it figured out until he gets hit by a car. All right. Now we've got a broken arm and has to like tell these kids, you didn't see me and has to walk away. He'll figure it out. Um, Lou Ellen thought he had it figured out. Got killed. Yep. Um, Cartel thought they had it figured out. That's why they were... So whenever Anton goes to the original motel that Lou Ellen was staying at, it was one or it was room 138 and he walks in and it's three Hispanic people. Yeah. Like, they were waiting for Llewellyn. They weren't expecting Anton, so then mm-hmm. they blow him up, and or he blows them up, and then he asks, he was like, how did y'all find him? Like, how did y'all do it? And we never, we never got the answer. How the, how the what? I mean, it was a tracker, I assume. It was the same one that he probably had. Oh, no, it was. Because when he killed... Woody Harrelson's boss and the guy says like, yeah, like there were multiple trackers on it and Anton was pissed. He was like, we didn't have to do that. You only needed one. I th- no, 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 no. I think he was talking about the tool as in the man. No, 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 no. Like he had multiple trackers for the money. That's the only logical explanation as to how the Mexicans would have found Because they Llewellyn told him. Because they said. In the first motel. Yeah, they said what motel they'd be at. What do you mean? You talking about the one in the desert? The desert? The no, one where he no, got no, killed? No, the very first motel that he goes to. Yeah. And so, but <clears throat> Anton was under the impression that he was the only one with a tracker to find the money. Okay. But then when he kills Woody Harrelson's boss, and then the accountant is like, well, he thought it would be better for there to be uh, like two. But I think they all had that. They were chasing the same tracker. You don't need two different trackers, I don't think, for a, for a thing. I think it connects to like one signal, unless you program it to connect to multiple. 
which is what Anton thought he he was the only one with that tracker. Oh, I thought it was that. That's why he was pissed. He was like, you only needed one tool. I thought he was talking about himself. Like, you don't need two people to chase it. It's only me. I'm good enough. You need the right tool, which is me, right. to go catch the guy. But how would the cartel have found him in that motel without the tracker? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, they would have the same track. I'm saying... If that were to happen, they would have been chasing that same exact tracker, like one tracker in with different things chasing it. Right, but Anton thought there was only one. Yeah, one. Yeah. So that's what he was pissed off about. Yeah, yeah. Because he was confused. He was like, "How, how did y'all find him?" Yeah. And he kills him in the shower. Woody Harrelson's character also thought he had it all figured out. Yep. He was so cocky. So cocky in the hospital. He, he was, was like, "You don't understand." It's like, dude, actually, you don't understand. Yeah. He was talking down on Llewellyn, and Llewellyn had a lot of shit figured out. He thought he was just a dumb. Guy that got lucky, but Llewellyn's a smart dude. He's a smart character. He makes really smart decisions. That's why it sucks that he dies, because he did all the right decisions, kind mm-hmm. of most of the right decisions, and played it smart. Well, no. I mean, the dumbest thing, well, I guess it really didn't matter, because the tracker was in that money regardless, but it does suck that he went back to like the original crime scene to like go give the guy water. Right. Probably like ask him questions and stuff. But. So yeah, even a good, even a good man, decent, even a decent man who tries to do the right thing and does gets, things the right way yeah. still can get killed. Yeah. Um, dude, could you imagine sitting in that truck fucking for day, like a day? Yeah, two days, and like your yeah, lips even, are just like doesn't even care about living. He's just like, I just get some fucking water. I, think, I, I get that I'm about to bleed out. I know that I've been shot. But please. Can I please just get some water? Like, I, oh, it's a shit way to go. I think it was Marcus Luttrell. You know him? That's the Navy SEAL Lone Survivor. The Lone Survivor movie is based off him. Oh, okay. He, uh, he was talking about whenever he was stranded after all of his men got shot and he was mm-hmm. by himself, you know, injured, trying to find a town, but he was in the middle of the woods in Afghanistan. I think it was Afghanistan. But he said he was, he had no water for like a, a day or two. He said he was so thirsty that he would try to like drink his blood. There'd be like mud on the ground. And he just like wanted to like shove it in his mouth because he said his mouth was just like so dry. Mm-hmm. Like nothing, no moisture in his water is like cakey, but he like tried to drink his blood because he just like was so fucking thirsty. And he finally stumbled upon a pond and he just head first. Yeah. Started just drowning in the water. Yeah, probably threw that shit up immediately too. It is oh, crazy. Yeah. Like, I mean, you can go forever without food realistically i mean yeah like a whole like month you i mean you're gonna be so hungry but like you need water like yeah all the time yeah otherwise your brain's just gonna shut down i mean your body too but um okay so let's start <laughs> from the beginning of the movie now all right god i think this is my first this was the first movie i saw um what's anton's Actor, what's the actor's name? Um, Javier Bardem. Yeah. This was the first movie I ever saw him in. And that first scene where he uh, chokes the police officer to death yeah. with his handcuffs. Yeah. And that face he makes. So creepy, bro. I remember seeing that. I was like, oh, this guy is scary. Like, this is terrifying. Like, And he never makes another face like that in the rest of the movie. No. That's, I think that's like, I mean, that is done on purpose. It's showing like, this is how terrifying of a man this guy actually is. He like, did, yeah, he, like everything, like that's him showing his true nature. That's what he looks like on yeah, the inside. Yeah, like that's a he's a fucking psycho. Yeah, and just all he's such a scary character because like everything he does is weird and just emotionless. Yeah, just killing people with no regard for but them. It's so, it's so well done because it's all these people in West Texas that probably just know everybody. They never hear about some crazy shit like this going on. Hell no. So when they get pulled over by a police car and some dude just pulls up with a little air tank and he's like, I need you to step out of the car and look at that haircut. And look, he's not even wearing a police uniform. Yeah, there's no, there's nothing. He didn't even say like, what's wrong? He's like, I'm going to need you to step out of the car. He's just taking advantage of just small town nature. They're like, okay, I mean, this is weird, but like, yeah. Uh, this can't be life threatening. Like I've <laughs> right. never dealt with a life threatening scenario in my, ever. You know that's like what he's banking on. Mm-hmm. That's why. I, like, so I just I think that's nuts. That there's that, and then there's when he's like outside of the the pharmacy when he's about to get his like 
all yeah. his medicine. Right. Granted, nobody really sees him, but he knows that even if they did, they just walk by. Mm -hmm. He might be like, you know, what are you doing, mister? And he'd probably just be like, I need you to walk away. <laughs> yeah. He'd be like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because like, if you see a guy, it, it just, it's so clearly he's about to blow up this car. Are you really about to get involved and say, hey, stop it, mister? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. In a small town, if you might. If he's about to blow that car up, now granted, I guess maybe a lot of those people like have guns. But now, somebody standing by um, their thing and just kind of fucking with it, you're not going to think anything of it. Yeah. If you see him lighting the shit, you're like, hey, what the fuck? Yeah. I'm not, I'm, I'm, okay. Do what you must. Yeah. But he's just banking on the fact that like nobody, nobody has ever felt in danger like the people that he's like, I guess the NPCs that he's yeah. encountering. And he knows that if he blows up this car, it's a big enough distraction that nobody's going to see him. Oh, Everybody yeah, will just go sure. straight blind. Oh, yeah. He's a ghost. He's a ghost. Yeah, I can't believe... I, I still can't believe it took me this many watches to realize that this whole movie takes place in 1980. And it makes a lot more sense if you... <laughs> once does. you realize that. Yeah. You're like, what? Wait, hold on. Did we not have cell phones in 2007? Yeah, you need Blackberries. Yeah. Flip they're phones. Just, they're all just making telephone calls. But then I just, I never put together that they're asking uh, Josh, Josh Brolin's character, like, were you in Vietnam? I was like, he's not that old. Like, 2007 and you're in Vietnam. I mean. That gives it away right there. You're, you're a grandpa. I mean. Oh, yeah. My grandpa was my grandpa. Yeah. In 2007. He was in Vietnam. Like, I just, I don't know why. I just. My brain just didn't pick up on that. Like, all I cannot believe <laughs> two thousand seven. I cannot believe it took me six times to figure out that this whole movie is taking place in nineteen eighty. Did you, but I bet you didn't even think about what time it was. I think you just kind of just didn't even yeah. Pay well, any I mean, attention you know, because I mean, we already like discussed that at the beginning. It's just you know, West Texas, just country folks. Like, it, it's pretty much the same right now as it is back then. You mm -hmm. know, or at least. That's what it looks like to me when I'm driving through it. Yeah, nothingness, just empty, just old, old school, that's old fashioned. The, that's like the worst part to drive through. It's just the desert. I hate driving through West Texas. Like I, I feel terrible because I got a, I got an uncle that lives out there in Lubbock. Mm. I was like, damn, dude. Like that drive blows. Yeah, I'm. I mean, I've made the drive twice, and I, I, re I do not plan on ever making that drive again. Dude, you know what sucks about that drive is that there's no cars out there, so you can speed your ass off, but now they have, like, planes that are scanning the road to see if you're speeding, and they'll pull you over. Oh, really? Oh, we, yeah, our our radar, our plane radar caught you at whatever. I didn't even know that. I'm like, bro, what? I just remember the last time I did, yes, you're right, like, I remember driving to Lubbock, and, dude, I, I hadn't seen a car for, and I'm not kidding, I, it had to have been, like, 100 miles. I just didn't see a car. <laughs> yeah. And then I go through, like, this... Uh, and I say small town here, I mean like two buildings. And like, sure, I slowed down a little bit. But then like as soon as they were gone, I just, I wasn't even thinking like speeding. I'm just, okay, like this is the worst drive ever. I'm just going to drive. Well, cop pulls me over. He's like, son, what are you doing? <laughs> I was like, how, how fast? He was like, 108. <laughs> I was like. Don't tell me oh. you don't do that, officer. I know your ass fucking goes one away. I was just like, holy shit. I, I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, you're the second car I think I've seen in like 200 miles now. Like, I'm just not even thinking at this point. And he was like, well, where are you going? I was like, I'm just coming here to celebrate a birthday party. I'm driving all the way from Dallas. And he's like, ah, oh, man, tough drive. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, not really. I mean, it's just pretty mindless driving. Yeah. But you know who saved me? Foxy. Nice. He gave pop, he pet Foxy. Pet Foxy. She was wearing a Dak jersey. He was a Cowboys fan. There you go. Warning. That, 108 and nice. a warning. That's fair, though, because I what was it, it was in Texas, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. The Texas law on speeding is like, I think it's very loose. Like, the cop can really just decide. Like, it's not a strict, like, if you're going five over, it's this. Like, it's kind of yeah. looser. Well, I know 
I mean, this used to, I remember hearing this years ago, so maybe they've changed it, but I remember like if you're going 15 over like in city limits, you can go to jail. I think it's 20 you, over. You could. No cops really going to arrest you for going no. 20 over. I think it's, yeah. I think it cuz I think over 20 it's like it's called a uh, reckless driving. Yeah. But so, so you they, could, but you like, can technically say technically could take you to jail. Like it's loose because if it's raining out really bad and that and you're going the speed limit, a cop can pull you over and say you're going too fast. You aren't driving uh, to, at a safe speed. Mm-hmm. But if you're driving a little fast on an open road, you'd be like, sorry, officer, I thought I was driving a safe speed. Yeah. I felt like it was a safe speed. So yeah. it's kind of like a little subjective, I think. That's why I was just... Could be wrong. It was funny. 108 and a warning. Where else can you get away with that? Oh, this says 15. You were right. It is 15, 15 still. Over. Yeah. Damn, but nobody I, does it. No. Nah, Nobody's you, getting arrested for going 15 over. What a jackass cop if he <laughs> pulls some, if he yeah. takes somebody to jail for 15 over. I'll tell you what. Everybody's going 15 over. Tommy Lee Jones' character isn't doing he's not making that arrest. But guess Hell what? No. For the like majority of his career, that's what he's dealing with. He's dealing with idiots like me that are just going 108 yeah. Yeah. and they don't even realize it. He's right. like, "Well, you know, that's cute dog." So, you know, <laughs> yeah. you just you get on, you have yeah, a good time. Tommy Lee Jones, when we were talking about characters that thought they had it figured out, Tommy Lee Jones is the only one that never really admits that he has it figured out. He's like, oh, yeah. well, you know, maybe. It's because he's we'll experienced. Very know? experienced. And why, he seems very wise. Like with the young cop that's kind of stupid. Yeah. He kind of just like, lets him be stupid. He's, know, not that, getting, he's not being... No, he's not mean. Nope. He's just, you know, he is letting him see and figure it out and just kind of talk to himself and state the obvious like yeah. you know all these observations that he's making and he never like gets mad at him yeah he always has these like thoughts the things he says really like you can dive into what he's thinking yeah like you know he never admits it but you know that he's been thinking about the cattle thing that's how Anton Chigurh has been getting into these um yeah buildings with this the cattle prong yeah. and he brings it up when he's talking to Llewellyn's girlfriend or sorry Llewellyn's wife yeah. He's like, sorry, my mind wanders sometimes. Yeah. But then like, I, or he said, I, I wonder sometimes. But then like when his, it's, I guess maybe he's kind of just letting the deputy figure it out for himself because the deputy tells him like, yeah, that, that guy that got his star or car stolen and like got shot in the head. No bullet. And Tommy Lee, I feel like his character is just like, well, we have established that this guy has like an air compressor. But like they knew that, it, did they know that? Yeah, because like, uh, so in the beginning scene, when right before he kills the cop, that cop is like saying like, yeah, I don't know, I just I found him, and he's like carrying around this like air. Oh, that's right. Compressor, you know, that's like the first thing. So it is known that. That's Wait, also, like, but he didn't specify what it was. Like, I don't know, some weird air thing with the tube down his arm. Yeah, but Tommy Lee being like right. around the block, he yeah, yeah. has put it together, and yeah. so he like, I think he's kind of messing with his little deputy. He's like, so you're telling me. Shot him in the head and dug around and took the bullet out. And he's like, oh, Sheriff, I, I really don't want to think about that. Yeah. And Tommy's just. <laughs> That's your job, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're going to have to really think. And uh, so, yeah, it, it is. It is cool seeing like just. Like, he, I think he's heard, maybe seen about enough crime scenes. Like, he probably stepped on to that you know, the initial one. And he probably knew what was what immediately. That's why he didn't even bother to go out there with the DEA or right. the FBI. He's like, I, I know what happened. Yeah, he's looking for one thing and they told him what it was. Yeah. Like when like you're like when he's talking about yeah, the lock blew right off or something. He's like, Okay. That's not, that's all I was gonna look for and you just told me so. We're yeah. I'm good. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going I'm not going out there. <laughs> I was gonna say that it does suck so bad the first time watching it, watching Llewellyn get killed because you're expecting it to be like a movie where you get to cheer him on. He's going to get the two million and take his wife out and be a happy ending because he's a badass character. But it's, it's like you said, you know, it happens. Yeah. It's just, you know, that in real life you can expect stuff, but everything's always up to chance. Yeah. Yep. Tomorrow's never promised. That just sucks because Llewellyn's a cool ass character. Yeah. Like he really does have pretty much everything figured out. Yeah. For the most part to protect himself. Yeah. And it sucks when you re- kind of realize, oh, he did kind of just, kind of just chanced his wife's life for yeah. the money, thinking, thinking he could win. Yeah, chancing it. He's really gambling his family's future away right there. Yeah. Here's something that I w- I would have really liked to see. Um, 
So Woody Harrelson's character is obviously like he's dealt with Anton before. Yeah. Or at least knows of him, right? No, I guess I think Anton's I, not a hitman. He is, but he's he's is a he's, hitman. He yeah. is. Yeah. So he okay. does care about money. The cartel had hired him to get the money back, basically, and then he just kills those guys so he can grab it. Yeah. Okay. He 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 does like money, but I always, especially after seeing it this time, you know, Woody Harrelson's like such a good actor, and so was Javier and. They have this type of history, so I always thought it would have been cool if they had, like made a spinoff, like after this movie, like the prequel. Yeah, just like what else has Anton's character done that Woody Harrelson has like been tracking? You know. Yeah. I always thought that would have been a pretty cool spinoff, because he knows like exactly how Anton moves. Yeah. How he deals with people. He probably knows about the coin. You know, he probably knows all of that. So. That's why Anton, I think that's why Anton ends up killing him because he doesn't kill the accountant because the accountant really doesn't have any, you know, he's, he's not showing any signs of not having principles. Uh, but I don't know. I always thought he killed the accountant because he asked him, he was like, are you going to shoot me now? And he's like, that depends. Do you see me? And he sees him. Did you see me? So he could be like, oh, nope, didn't see you. He's like, all right, see you. Goodbye. Yeah. And if that accountant's smart, he would in fact say, nope, didn't see him. Yeah. Because he knows that Anton can just walk right into a building and just blow your brains out in broad daylight <laughs> yeah. and then apparently just walk out. Yeah, get away with it. Yeah. He figured that one out beforehand. Um, But we were saying something about him saving... Oh, so whenever whenever you hear, you know that Woody Harrelson's character has knows about Anton. Anton knows that he knows about him. So when he starts acting like he doesn't know anything and tries to be... You know, try to lie to him. He's like, "Come on, yeah. like we, 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 why are you doing this? Like we both know what this is." Yeah, so he kills him. Well, there's that, but I mean, he's really, he's telling him. He was like, "Don't beg. Like you know my history." He was like, "I think it's better that you just recognize your like situation for what it is, and there will be more dignity in it." He's yeah, like I have this gun pointed right at you. And you've been chasing me. You're going to die. Yeah. Like, don't beg. Don't try and, like, bribe me. Like, I don't need your help to find this money. Yeah. I know that the guy who really knows where the money is is right across the street in a hospital. Yep. So he's like, I, I don't need you. And it makes you think that if he would have stood his ground and had some dignity, he might have been, he might have survived. And I also think Anton's just kind of intrigued by uh God, I cannot remember his name. Lou Lou <laughs> Ellen. Lou Ellen. I think he's intrigued. He I don't think he expected him to be so smart. I w- yeah, I wonder even if he would have not killed Lou Ellen. Like I wonder if the really the switch happened for him to all right, I need to go kill this guy. He was chasing him and trying to kill him. But when he spoke to him on the phone right before his death, he said, We need to talk. Yeah, like he was see, almost ready to make a deal. Yeah, with him. see, there was like a level of respect there. Yeah, because he's like, you know, this has been a good, hard fought battle. You've been doing stuff great. He's like, let's talk. Let's figure out how to get this money. He might have saved him, but whenever Llewellyn, well, he, yeah, I mean, he's dead. Like yeah. he's gonna kill him. Yeah, but, when when Llewellyn decided to risk his wife's life for this money, I think maybe Anton was like, "Well, you're gonna die. You have no dignity in your in your in your family." That's interesting. Okay, I I kind of like that point. I've never really thought about that, but he does tell his you know widowed wife. He was like he had the chance to save you, but he didn't. You know, so like yeah, because the, he knew where he was. He literally said, "I know where you are." Like I'm not heading there though. He calls him and says, "We need to talk." If he knew where he was and he wanted to kill him, he would have just done it. Yeah. So he's almost like giving him he, the chance. He did. Yeah. I never really thought of it like that. And then when you think about what Tommy so Lee Jones that is, said. That is like what the, I think that's what flipped the switch for yeah. him right there. He yeah. was like, you know, you, I get that you wanted the money, but I would have assumed that you'd want to like protect your wife more than anything. But Yeah. And then you hear Tommy Lee Jones, I think when he's in the um, the town that Llewellyn died, the guy's talking about. Well, you know, what kind of soulless stuff is this or what kind of evil... Or he says something like... He says something about how this is just like disgusting and like meaningless, purposeless. And then Tommy Lee Jones is like, well, I'm not sure, so, so sure it's purposeless. He kind of mentions about there's probably some type of principle with this. Mm. Or there's some something more than just 
blindly killing because Anton yeah. kind of lives by something. He's not just meaningless, meaning, meaninglessly killing people. There is, I, I'm kind of with you on how he does respect the people with principles. Like he probably, I, I uh, well, he would have had to kill Tommy Lee Jones' character just because he's a police officer. But I don't even know if he would have. Yeah, because like he probably would have come to respect unless, them. Yeah, unless he got in his way. Exactly. Yeah. Because he does, he does kind of kill some people, but it's for his reason of like getting a car, trying to hide. That's like a yeah. Part that's of his just plan that's just an NPC. Like it doesn't even matter to him. I mean, he likes to kill. I mean, remember he tries to kill that bird when he's driving across the bridge just for yeah. no reason. He just <laughs> yeah, but he misses. He misses. And see, like there's little things like that where it's like, oh, he missed. Shit happens. He, it, well, it's not even that. I think for me, I'm just thinking. I was like, you know, he's not. You know. He's not some dead shot. Yeah. He misses a lot of shots. Most of his kills are pretty close range. Yeah, and he does miss. And some are kind of farther, but... Yeah, like when... You expect a hit by a professional hitman to be yeah, nailing when, these. When Brolin's character jumps out of the window, like, he nicks him, but, like, you know, I don't know. Like, how do you just nick him? Like, how do you not just fucking shoot him right in the back? I mean, it's dark. Yeah. I get that. Like, kind of further shot. But, Falling down. Body's kind of shielded by the window. Yeah. And he's hurt. Yeah, I mean, it, it is cool. I That's what I am now starting to like find intriguing about Anton's character is that his persona upon like the first couple watches is like, oh, this guy just has all of his shit figured out. But he doesn't. I mean, he's not like a perfect hitman. Mm -mm. And I mean, him even going into... Uh, Brolin's character is like the residency office and he's like like where does he work he's like I can't tell you that and he's like tell me and then she doesn't and he's like I gotta go figure this out mm -hmm. like you know he couldn't even do anything about that so there's certain parts where Anton's character will tear up why do you think that is what do you mean when, do, when does he tear up when he's on the phone after he kills Woody Harrelson's character, he starts to like cry. Does he? Yeah, there's like tears rolling down his face. And then there's another time he tears up almost whenever Tommy Lee Jones comes in. And I thought maybe it's because he's sad he had to kill somebody. Did, wait, did you see him tear up or did you see him wipe his face? No, no, no. Tears came down his face. Really? Look up, uh, yeah, yeah. This says. He does cry. Hmm. I didn't notice that. Yeah, so this is saying something different, but I would maybe think because he, I guess okay, this is this will help my argument if this happens. Does is Anton in that uh, motel when Tommy Lee Jones gets there? Or is Tommy Lee Jones just imagining? He's imagining. Okay. Yeah. No, he's in there. He's just under the bed, probably. Because you see the smoke and the lock. No, he had like he had just been there, and he'd already left with the suitcase. That's why like, whenever... I thought the lock showed a reflection of Tommy Lee Jones. That's uh, what he's thinking. Anton sees because he's. I mean, he's not in there. He opens the door, and Anton's not in there. But he goes into the bathroom, and uh, Anton runs out while he's in there. That's what I just read. Oh, because that is. But you don't hear footsteps. Anton's a badass, bro. He's a professional. <laughs> but you do see the smoke like he was, he just went into that room. You know, the smoke in the lock. Mm. Yeah. I always took it as like it was him like just being terrified of the fact that like, of course, when I come back to the crime scene, it would be at the same time he did. But that's just not what happened. It, so a cut and, and okay, so if he was there, there also it looks like there's tears welling in his eyes. So my theory would be that Anton is upset when he has to kill somebody who doesn't he doesn't think should die. It says, as written, Shiger is behind the door and there's no explanation for his escape other than the subjective open ventilation duct. What? Nobody thinks that he fucking well, went through the duct. No, no, no. You see that he was there because there's oh. a dime next to the duct. Right, right, right. Right. And so I get that. I don't know. I, I don't think he's in there. Because he opens the door, and he doesn't see him. I'm pretty sure he's in there. I think he's in there. I think he, he was either under the bed Where? or the closet, or maybe he went through the window, but the window's locked. Why would he do that? I think he went through the doorway. 
because he just leaves the door open. Like when he goes in the bathroom, he's in the closet or other way around. Yeah. But yeah. if it's what you're saying where like, okay, so think about this. He sees like the smoke from whenever like he punches out the lock. And then remember, there's like the scene where Tommy Lee Jones looks at the reflection and so does uh, Anton. Yeah. And so like they both like see each other. Physics would say that that is because Anton is right behind the door. And so when Tommy Lee Jones opens the door and he's not there, he, he's not there. Right. I don't know. You have to remember that he looks at the reflection and like sees like yeah, a body. I, I'm, I'm, I see what you're saying and I'm not even disagreeing with you because yeah. I really don't know. I, I see both. Yeah. But, I think he had just been there. Like right. he knows obviously he's been there, but I don't think he's in the room when he goes in there. The tough one, because I guess he could have been on the other side or under the bed. Because I mean, Tommy Lee's character never looks back, so I guess in a way he could have walked. That's locked, right? Yeah. Well, and I guess kind of siding with Scott here. Anton always takes his shoes off so nobody can hear him coming. So he could be in the room. I always thought that Tommy Lee was just terrified that he was in the room, and then that's, that's when yeah. he decided he didn't want to do this anymore because he was that close to dying. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, yeah. But Tommy Lee's character never turns around to double check, and he only turns on the light in the bathroom. Never Suggestive. turns on the light in the, the living room. I just assume that the shot, whenever he's looking at the... When it cuts... With Anton, then it cuts to the reflection in the lock. I just assume that was Anton, like, knowing he's there. All right. But... I don't know. Also, wait, wait, wait. Is it... He's for sure on the floor in that scene? I don't know. He could be in the closet with like a little cracked door. Yeah, I thought... I thought he was standing like up against a wall. Oh, I he thought is. he was on the floor. No, no, For some stupid reason. No, he's he's standing. There we go. He could be fucking hiding in the closet. Who knows? But he's looking... It shows the golden hole of like the light coming through the, the busted out lock. There's just only half light on his face. He could just be in the corner. Yeah. Again, whatever. I think it's suggestive. I think it's supposed to be like, was he in there? Was he not in there? Yeah. I'm going to go and say he was in there. Okay. He's not. <laughs> be a lot scarier if he was. Yep. Um. All right. 9.3. Scott, 10. You gave it a 9. Mm-hmm. Flat. Solid 9. Good movie. It's good a good movie. movie. It's very stressful. It gets you, you know, gets you on the edge of your seat. You're, I mean, I don't, I wonder, how did this movie do? Like, was it well received by audiences? Yeah, I'm sure. Because some people, I feel like, I have heard some people, well, my mom and dad, they just, they didn't like it that much. Because they're like, it's way too slow. I was like, what? You got to watch it again. That's why. It's like, a multiple watcher. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I feel like there's never... some movies you can't watch just once. Four awards. Best picture, best director, best adapted screenplay, best supporting actor. The fuck did my parents know? <laughs> did, uh, did the Coen brothers write this? No, it's based on a book. But the book script. Mm -hmm. Oh, the yeah. script? Yeah. Adapted screenplay. Okay. That's good. That's good. It's always nice when a when a book movie hits. And it always it sucks is. ass when it sucks. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um I tried my best to go for the mustache on this episode. Um I You almost had like a handlebar. I you killed could do it. A, you could do a handlebar. I was going for a Josh Brolin. Josh Brolin looks mean. I wish I could have a fucking mustache like that. That spelling is impeccable. <laughs> Look at that thing. And I did I didn't get it. Nope. I didn't get it. That's okay. It's a good attempt though. It's not a bad stash. He's like forty, you know? He's not forty in that. He's probably in his thirties. How old is he now? Well no, I mean like character wise, like he might be in oh. his forties. 56, like he was in his 40s. There you go. Yeah, so listen, I'll, I'll get back to no, you in my wasn't. 40s. That was 20 years ago. Almost. Then he's, he's in his, he's he 36. I don't know. Or, no. No, 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 I don't want to do the math. I'm scared. 
<laughs> Every time we do math live on the show, it's fucking Bad. terrible. 39. Oh, almost 40. I'll meet, you, I'll meet you there. There we go. All right. Well, when I'm 39, I'll show you what kind of mustache I'm rocking. Nice. Me too, hopefully. I think I'm bringing the stash back. I'm about to shave it off. It's probably best for the best. Yeah. Yeah. It's All right. Thank you guys for listening. Catch us next week on the Crown Cinema Podcast. We are...